Hello, darlings. How are we doing today? This is the secret history living in your aquarium. Okay, I can't, I, I can't do the eyebrow thing. How's everybody doing today? We doing good? We doing well? We doing fine? We doing swine? Bacon, swine, good. All right, let's see here. Who's rolled on through? Uh, we got aqua balls in here early. Hello, everyone. Good day, very hot day. Yeah, it's a humid one here, even in Seattle, where the rain is nonstop except for the 60 days we haven't had any. Uh, Sonny Doan, what's going on? Yes, 14,000 subs. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. It comes out to something like uh, 3,500 subs a year that I've been working on the channel. And uh, the crazy part is that in the last year, I think half of those came. And before that, the, uh, the other ones, you know, I think it took a whole year to get to like 500. So YouTube, crazy little world that it is. Uh, I have to thank you all so much for uh, sticking around, for checking back in. I mean, I know I subscribe to channels and kind of, like, get into them, watch all their videos, and then I kind of just, like, disappear. And then YouTube will be like, hey, remember you set every alert on this thing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. And uh, you haven't been telling me anything, YouTube. So I love it when I see faces that haven't seen for a while checking back in. So Crown Tail Half Moon, thank you so much as well. Uh, let's see who else is in here nice and early. Uh, thank you. Uh, Atkins Nature Aquarium says, uh, you've earned it, Alex. Keep up the amazing content. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, by the way, oh, it's Ian Atkins. What's up? I didn't realize uh, who you were. Oh, crazy. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, Pete Berlinski, what is going on, brother? Down under. Um, I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you are doing uh, not too hot down in Australia. Uh, Mark, hello. Uh, Muppet, good to see you as always. Chevy Fish, what is going on? Good to see you, of course. Helen Bowler, hello. And we've got more people streaming in now. Born to farm South Africa. All right, not South America or South Antarctica, but South Africa. That is awesome. Uh, I may have to chat with you. I love South Africa. African history was part of one of my majors. So always fascinated by that country and uh, KwaZulu-Natal and the Cape and I had plans to go there before all of this nonsense with this scourge, this biological scourge that's made it so Americans can't go anywhere but Egypt and Croatia. Croatia's pretty cool, though. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Matthias. Uh, is it Matthias or Matthias? Usually Matthias would be the French way, I assume. So I'm going to say Matthias, but, uh, and Kate, hello, um, says, I started watching your videos in order today from the first one. That is commendable. You know, that's awesome. I'm scared to know what you found. I've got 500 some videos now, I would probably say. There's some I've deleted and uh, made private and things. Um, or redone and then just deleted the first one, which I think I'm going to do again with some of them where I could have just been way more concise. Uh, and I, it was really like a, a vlog or a blog for 15 people watching at the time. And so uh, it didn't matter if I was chatting along with them or off topic. Um, now I, I, I should probably stay a little more on topic or at least rant and go on tangents that are somewhat... Uh, educational and or entertaining rather than just dry and bizarre uh all right so um we got lots of good people in here early that is for sure um i hope that everybody's having a good day uh i'm having a pretty good day uh, my wife is going white water rafting and wanted me to come but i can't because of my injured back and the whole got hit by lightning thing blah 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 um so i have to stay home and i can't go to the cabin 
but she's got friends going, so now they're they all want to go get tested and cleared before there's five girls from different parts of the Northwest hanging out together. So I hope she can get that done. But while she's away, I get to play with my fishes and splash water all over the place and, um, you know, move things around and do as I please. So while the girl's away, I play uh, with my fish. <sighs> Sad. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Dan Butts, how's it going, brother? Uh, you just got a 30 long doing some aquascaping right on. Jessica Taylor, hello. Chubbs Aquatics, hello. We got lots of quality folks in here today, and I really, really do want to thank you, especially those of you who are also on Patreon, your average fish keeper. Nothing average about you, my friend. So, today, obviously, we'll do some question and answer. I'll show you guys some new features and or should i say features bugs glitches it's not a glitch it's a feature uh of the fish room going on right now um <laughs> you've always wondered what men do while their wives are away well i'm pretty lame so i'm probably a bad person to ask uh, i'm like sweet i can have youtube on and I can read Scientific American or JAMA, the Journal of American Medicine, or, you know, Ecology Today, and uh, blast, you know, I don't know, the Beatles, something on the record player. Um, so, yes. Jeff Chambers, how's it going? Um, so, you know, today I had a couple things to chat about. We have a couple things to check in on. And, of course, I can do... Um, you know, I can do uh, some question and answering, of course. But, um, first of all, I wanted to clear something up. And the illustrious Alan Bauer, who has helped me with this, who sent the uh, copy of the books over from Germany, from uh, Christo Kasselman, uh, helped me uh, with this whole idea of doing an aquascape contest. I'm going to put up another video uh, later today or tomorrow also that lays it out in like six minutes or something just to make it clear. The Zen Ginger, hello. Spirulina, hello. Um, so that it's more accessible for people who are just scrolling through the channel. But um, we, we have gone over it in a few live streams, but I know you guys don't all catch all the live streams. I don't even catch all the live stream. Wait. Yes, I do. Never mind, but you know what I mean. So, um, let's talk about that Aquascape contest real quick. So, the prize is a book that's valued at around $200 with shipping and customs and value-added taxes and slave labor and all the things that they make us do to get this silly book in from Germany. But it is an American, in English, as it were, uh, printed book, and we are going to be giving it away and it is the hands down best uh, aquatic plant and aquatic you know aquascape and ecology book that there is in the world uh, she had probably the best book before and it's just called aquarium plants and it is incredible there's 750 pages of full color over a thousand species and how to trim them, different forms when they're immersed, um, their their background, uh, how to do biotope tanks, all sorts of really cool stuff about them and their water parameters, their care, their needs, all that stuff. And we, uh, this book is not for sale in the U.S. yet. It's not you can't find it on Amazon. You can only find it on Crystal Kesselman's website, and uh, I believe it's sixty nine. Uh, 99 in um, p pounds or euros. So either way, it's probably right around 80 to to $100 depending on the day and the exchange rate. And then you've got your shipping and then you've got getting it here during this crazy time we are seeing. Um, and I've got a review of that book if you want to check it out in more detail. Uh, and she's also actually going to post that review on her website if I ever get to compressing it and sending it to her. I'm a bad person. I'm sorry, Crystal. I should have been more on the ball and quicker with that. But let's talk about that aquascaping contest. So the main idea for it is you're going to find an image or someone else's aquascape 
or an idea even. Um, an image I like just because we can do a side by side and post it uh, to like the Facebook group or my email or uh, yeah, those are the places. Uh, the the Facebook group of aquatic, um, the secret history living in your aquarium. Uh, we'll, we'll start like a thread for, a, you know, the aquatic aquascaping contest. And um, I guess it could be immersed also, so it doesn't need to be all aquatic aquascaping. But the idea is that you take a picture. So maybe your picture is of the Serengeti. And then you're going to aquascape and you're going to say, like, that's what inspired me. And it doesn't need to be like a recreation of the picture, but it it should have some either metaphorical or actual um, visual tie to it. So, um, let's see here. Um, let's, let me show you guys. So, like, for instance, in this tank, which is lit really poorly because of the natural light overpowering the little LED so much, but in here, I mean, you could say that my theme was going to be um, a river or a snake or something like that, you know, and we've got this snaking log we've got different terrain on different sides a mountain um and then one directional flow now i've got this big old filter that's really actually moving mid-level water so i mean that's all it takes um so we will I'll, I'll post all the links in that video that i post tomorrow or tonight um of where to send all of the the uh the pictures and things but it'll be due on uh, I think we've decided that it'll be due on the uh, 13th of September, which is going to be about a week from now on Sunday. Check this out. She's laying eggs right now. Um, so pe some people have known about it for a month. Um, I'm not going to judge on, uh, you know, if, some, if, if you've had an old tank and you got some cyanobacteria, like you're just saying right now, or some algae, like, I mean, we all get algae and stuff, so I'm not going to judge you if you have an existing project going and you want to spruce it up for this. It's really for fun, and um, the, it's not going to be like, oh, so-and-so spent X amount of money, and so they, they killed it, and they're going to win for sure, because they've got rimless tanks and so forth. Um, so, I mean, you can set up an aquascape for the day, if that's how you want to roll, like a lot of the photographic aquascapes do steal plants out of another tank. You could look at my Iwagumi videos where you almost completely use rock for your aquascape. Very cheap. I mean, you could even do a goldfish bowl. So um, it should be just designed to, to be fun, have a little, do some creative stuff. Um, I mean, you could really like wow us and do something where, you know, the idea would be to do an outdoor tub that is just for spawning and maybe your picture is a marsh or something, you know, and then show that you've made it a productive ecosystem in a, uh, I don't know, a Dorito bag, something crazy. Um, so you sky's the limit on the creativity, but here's the breakdown of how it's going to go. I'd show you what I wrote, but it's, I mean, does that you guys can't even read it. I probably can't. So, there are going to be three main sections for, for grading the aquascape. And like you see, I, I do jungle aquascapes usually. I start them as Iwagumi. Uh, and then uh, as soon as I can afford plants or steal plants from my other tanks, I just fill the thing until it's crazy. Um, I don't have a problem with multiple entries, quite honestly. Um, if they were created, if all the multiples were created during this time period, like the last month or or um, since I announced the contest. Uh, but if you're going to put one that is from... Uh, if, if you're going to add one that is from uh, prior to me announcing it, you should only enter that one. And then if you want to add additionals, they could be from... Um, only the last month or so, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, size doesn't matter, money spent doesn't matter, but um, I guess there are a few edges that you may, I mean, money will give you an edge to some degree, but we tried to get rid of that for the most part. Nobody's gonna care if you've got a rim on your tank. Alan and I are the judges for the most part. We might default, defer 
defund no no we're not defunding that's a different debate that people are having we are going to defer to crystal if we have any issues so um let's see here um inspiration is going to be 10 points so five for the idea so that uh, you show a serengeti or you show an amazon picture of underwater in the amazon so you're doing a biotope or you're doing uh, Iwagumi, so maybe a picture of some nice Iwagumi Zen rock gardens, or maybe it's just colors, maybe it's a painting, Starry Night, and all the fish in it have the colors from the painting, I don't know. But five points for the idea, and five points for the execution, or how much we get it. Like, it's one thing to have a clever idea and, and let us know in the little paragraph that you'll write with it, but it's another when uh, we can see it when we can all look at it and say, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think we can all vote on this via Facebook. I know not everyone has Facebook, though, but it is the most democratically accessible platform that a lot of you do have, and we have a few hundred people on there. So I think we're still going to post there, but if you really don't like Facebook, I understand that. And you can post to my uh, Alexander J. Williamson at gmail.com email, and then I can uh, post for you and add your paragraph and your pictures uh, to it and edit your name if, if you don't want that stuff on the uh, internets of Zuckerberg. So uh, the next section is going to be sustainability health execution. Uh, not as in you're uh, executing things, not that sort of health or whatnot that would be not very healthy wow she's laying eggs right now her ovipositor is out and she's literally laying them in rows and as she rubs her body against these eggs which you know what i think my old camera was better quite frankly uh but as she lays them in a in uh, rows she rubs her own biofilm which she's secreting from these glands on the underside of her body and daddy will do the same you can see his little fins are uh all bristly and, and uh, flexed underneath his belly. So he'll be doing the same, and that gives them the immunity of both parents. Okay, so back to the scape thing. I don't mind if you just want to find it, uh, like find the angle that you're going to take the picture from, from above. You can have multiple angles. This I really want to just encourage fun and creativity. I don't want to stress anyone out. You know, your aquascape could be in a bottle or in a jar. It could be miniature. It can be really tiny. It can be plants that are not aquatic. I mean, honestly, that would probably you'll probably lose some points in this section of uh, execution of sustainability, which is will it age well? How will it grow out? And, um, you know, does it make sense? Did you put giant plants in the front that are going to be huge no matter what? Or... Did you put bigger plants in the back and, and smaller in the front? You can totally put, you know, like these that are going to grow super tall, this high grow Pinatifada um, Sunset or Rosevig in the front. Like, that's fine, but you'd have to trim it. So we know that's going to be a high-maintenance scape, which is fine, but we want to see, does that make sense? Because I always think it's unfair when people create these scapes that are just made out of, like, you know, they're super gluing pine needles to something and cutting off little branches and it only looks good from one angle as a diorama, a diorama and really like there's no oxygen flow there's no circulation and the fish that are in the tank would die in a day and the plants would be dead two days later after that so it there's going to be 10 points for how well does it um, age as in grow out and then another one for biodiversity and animal health so um, you know do, does it make sense what you put together like if you put an Oscar and a bunch of chili rasboras in a tank and took a picture um, haha very funny but uh, that you're going to lose points because that doesn't make any sense um, in the long term by the way before I get to the last section, look how much this bulb has grown since uh, four days ago. It literally sprouted and exploded. Really, really cool um, tiger lily bulb. And the gobies, they're all doing good, just so you guys know. I get, every time I, I get online now, people are like, how are the gobies? Show us the gobies. So uh, the gobies are good. They're just hiding. But I am... Uh, I'm uh, hatching a bunch of bulb plants. So I cleared out a tank outside 
and it was just full of bulbs. And so beyond that, and also my um, Taiwan uh, nymphoides uh, plants, these guys, uh, the little Thai lilies, I cut them and uh, started new sprouts all over the place. So I think I got about 10 cuttings out of it, out of the big main one in, that, in the tank down here. All right, so last section is going to be um, the, the creative and art element. So how does it flow? Is it balanced? If it's, if it's not supposed to be balanced and it's asymmetrical, like how does it look? Like right now, it looks like I didn't put any effort into this tank. I didn't. I was hunting for some fish erythromicrons that are back there and I knocked over the filter I knocked over this the plants aren't rooted the snails are all coming out to eat because I left food so like why would I take a picture of that uh, not a good time there's coral in this tank so why are there uh, still a couple um, rasboras that don't want hard water in this tank Alex what are you doing don't do as I do do as I say uh, so Things like that, like how are the animals doing? How will the the how does the ecosystem look? Does it does it look like it makes sense? Um, I hope that's clear. It's a little different than the how are how will it age and are the animals making sense? It's it's just a little bit different. But that's going to be five points, um, and five points for the balance, the t the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, the golden spiral, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I am an artiste for the last 15 years, and Crystal Kesselman is also has a great eye for things. Uh, so I like to think that at least I could probably give some uh, input on that. Uh, and then uh, the the last five points are for overall how it looks. Just is it a does it does it look good? I mean, is it cool? Is it in, inventive? Uh, it flows together. It just how it feels. That gut reaction of wow, that looks cool, you know, I'd stop on that thumbnail, basically, um, that sort of thing, so that is going to be the last five points, so that's for 35 points, and uh, then if there's ties, you know, we can figure that out later, uh, but the first place prize will be that uh, book that's signed personally by Crystal Kesselman, and uh, also we will be getting... Um, it's very possible that we'll be having some other prizes. So some, uh, some, uh, second, third, maybe fourth place prizes. Cheers. They're still not paying me, but I'm still paying them. Oh, you guys want to hear something really gross that happened? I was getting the, the, um, old food out of one of these tanks so I like to use the turkey base there and I'll go like this and I'll kick up the dirt and the mulm a little bit and I'll get water that looks just gnarly in the in the turkey base there and then I quickly I'll brush it over like this if I'm headed to a bucket um it just helps get planaria and old food and stuff keeps things down in there but I'll do that, and I actually dropped it into my Dr. Pepper, like, over the course of doing it over and over, and then reached down for it and was like, oh, no, and just drank this gnarly, like, I might have to go to the hospital at some point, water. Uh, in all seriousness, like, it could be a bad health issue uh, if you do that, but I, th I think I'll be okay. I have a strong constitution as far as that goes. I have an overactive immune system, if anything. So I just saw, and you guys know I can't help it, even when I'm live streaming, I just saw a fish in here in the little hill stream mini that has a beautiful clutch of eggs on her belly um, that is a, a beautiful Midaka rice fish. And she's a red cap, so she's one of the new strains that's hard to find. And of course, I want her bibbies. Um, here is another beautiful little red cap, juvenile, just cruising around. Here's a pearl scale cruising around. Um, they're looking really nice. Uh, I have to say, the ones I got from Aquatic Arcs, sure, they looked nice. But the ones that I've hatched and grown at home really do have a better color on their on their head they have um a little more uh stamina and size there she is 
check this out. She's got so many eggs on her right now. She's probably got 20, a dozen to 20 eggs on her. And she is so freaking quick. I know she's the, the rebel. She's going to dive right behind the Anubius. Watch. She's watching me. Oh, she's already gone, and I didn't even move the net. So, she is laying eggs like no tomorrow in this tank, but I never get her eggs, so I don't know what to do about her. Um, I really don't, because I want her eggs. Oh, wait. She made a fatal flaw. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> All these other ones are big dummies, and I can catch them instantly. But of course, the one with the most beautiful markings, the unicorn, is, you know, uncatchable. I can't ride the unicorn. So sad. So sad. Uh, this tank's getting out of hand again. I mean, I didn't think it would get out of hand with so much sand. Uh, I wasn't supposed to rhyme, but I'm just saying, like, I didn't think it had enough nutrients with just uh, ADA aqua soil in, like, I don't know, eight inches of the, the tank. <clears throat> but it has, and uh, you can see from above the color better on, on these live streams. But you know, the, the Hygro Pinnatifata white variegated is here. Uh, lots of low tech Rotalas and Ludwigias, and um, Hygrophila bronze and Hygrophila coriumbosa. And then I've tried to catch as many as I can of the long fin. Uh, albino plecos and l lemon plecos and then put the short fin ones up in here so I don't know that's kind of going okay but um, let me make sure I didn't miss any of your beautiful comments you beautiful people <coughs> um, oh you're putting a merch order to the UK tomorrow awesome I hope that gets to you Irish hamster man Irish hamster man I hope that gets to you, uh, because Europe, Australia, and Canada, oh, Canada, the home of not my name, um, are, is, uh, supposed to carry the merch that I have created without extra fees and BS, um, David Einhorn, hello, and, uh, let's see here. 300 rice fish, Spirulina? That is a lot of babies. Um, yeah, so, I also, uh, that's interesting you say that, uh, Ian, that the, the actual breeding of the rice fish, so I've kept them separate to some degree, but then I also, like, I put, like, the blue... Um, the blue, uh, daisies rice fish up here, and outside there's a mix of all the rice fish, and I am curious to see who is the uber rice fish that, that their genetics kind of beat out all the other ones, like what they'll look like by the end of summer, and I'm not really peeking either. Uh, and one interesting thing I've noticed about the pearl scales that I've raised up in my own tanks, and by the way, you know this tank has no no soil or anything other than a little bit of coral to keep the TDS above nada um, for these endlers. But um, this tank here, uh, what's cool is that the, it seems like with the higher TDS, that's all I can figure, the higher TDS in the water, these Medaka pearl scales have yellow tails. If you guys, I don't know if that shows up well, but they have really strong hands on the top and bottom, and then they've got like a translucently yellow tail that's really beautiful. I mean, I've never seen it on rice fish before. Uh, whereas the other strains don't have it whatsoever in any of my tanks, or even in this tank. Um, so that's, I actually do want to separate these, uh, these traits and get them aside. Now, also, the traits in these endlers, I need to kind of sort out and figure out what in the heck I'm doing. Um, I'll, I'll finish a couple more updates and then we're going to talk about fish that are hard to keep alive fish that are probably a poor choice if you're new to the hobby and why those reasons are it doesn't mean that they're you shouldn't keep them but it's just that's the nature of those fish because of the way people are informed and because of the way they have grown up their ecology the the evolution of these fish 
Uh, looks like we have a mother about to give birth in this tank. Also, I want to cross these Danios with my Lake Inlay Danios. And I know everybody gets mad when you cross things that aren't meant to be crossed, but they have these uh, beautiful yellow fins that are so long. It's not a mutation found in nature anyways. And so I just want to cross them to see if I can get some more of that yellow on the Lake Inlay Esculpe. I mean, they're actually in the basin all over, but... See if I can get some of that going on. Also, you can see the bulb plants in here. Just bam, they're growing out. All the Aponagetans and the, the sword ferns. Um, I do think those Danios are doing a number on my Malawa and Gold Nebula shrimp, though. Like, a bad number. Uh, so, I'll probably move these guys uh, soon. Because this, this tank still has a ton of shrimp, granted. But it, it had, like... 500 and I'm not kidding that's not like an exaggeration I'm guessing four to five hundred shrimp in a 20 gallon tank and now it is not like that which I mean that's probably why those Daniels look so darn good um, also I have a hatchery going on here um, those African barbs that I bought the banded barbs I put them in here uh, together there were definitely some egg laden females I'm waiting, it's supposed to be 36 to 72 hours, and I, I did pull out four little teeny tiny eyelash size fry, don't know if they came off the leaves that I got, the, the vegetation which I grabbed out of this tank, so they could be a tetra, they could be whatever. Um, or if they are, in fact, from the barbs. But I really do want to spawn. They're so shy, though, and get a whole tank. Like I want, like, 50 of them. I've got 20 now. Almost 20. Of these beautiful barbs, these African barbs. Um, they're full size right now. They're about an inch and a half. It says on their profile that they, online, on most places, two and a half inches. That's actually a different species. These guys don't get that big, and they have orange fins, and that's how you can differentiate them. They, you see the orange fins? The males have really orange fins. Um, but I just love them. They're really cool little fish. Uh, and then I've also got the pearl, or the um, opal garamis, which I really... Um, op wait, is that right? Is it pearl or opal? I'm totally drawing a blank. Uh, oh well, brain, brain error, brain error, um, well, keeping a lot of quarry fry in a net, let them grow out, be okay, I had a tank set up, but ammonia spiked, and I moved them back to a 55 tank in a fishnet, if they have enough space, it will, but what I worry about is in a net, they feed off the bottom, so I have some actual, let's, let's look for them, there's a bunch of quarry fry in here that are very young, um, they're like a week old, um, you may see them go by, they're like little black, little black dots, well not dots, but little eyelash hairs, um, and they're cruising around in here, but they really need to scavenge, so what I would do is I would put something at the base so that they can scavenge for food that's dropped, and see, oh, hold on, let's see if we can chase it down here, um, all right, here, here it comes, up the side. Up the side for the win. See it? So this is one of the baby uh, Venezuela Corridoras. And, um, yeah, maybe this one's two weeks old. But there we go. So to get to this size is the hardest part. Once they're about a week older than this, you can keep them in the net just fine. Honestly, you might want to keep them in something like this or one of those floating ones that's like the one in there uh or or a pen mesh that's like this where you can put food on the bottom but really the food they want is biofilm and uh mulm and food that other fish have chewed and then dropped so it's not really that they want like i mean they'll eat flake food and stuff don't get me wrong so they'll survive, some will, but you'll have a better survival rate most likely if they have a flat ground surface to eat off of that also uh, accumulates some of the uh, detritus and mulm that, that they love to munch on. Uh, 
Let's see here. Haley, uh, Fish Fun 57, how low? How are you doing? Um, getting ready for winter. Understandable. Uh, Dan Butts got a twig ca uh, catfish today from local fish store. Hour away. That's a commit. That's committed drive. Oh, you got a red lizard whiptail catfish from the wet spot too. Yeah, the oddball fish are rad. I mean, if this tank didn't have so many uh, random rice fish and things in it right now, uh, and the pleco grow outs, the long fin plecos, I would love to add um, either another stifodon because actually the the biofilm, which I thought was going to be an issue has been totally not an issue. They've had plenty to graze on. Everybody's staying fat and sassy. Nobody's looking skinny. Um, and also, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think some, you know, my one of my favorites is the RoboCop. And I know that sounds silly, but that is a, a fish that is related to the Autosynclus, and it's a little catfish, and it's orange. But it goes by its Latin name, which is Robocop. And I'm not kidding. And, um, pretty cool. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, I will never get you, will I? Uh, I think she actually dropped her eggs. Oh, and I just buried them in the sand. But I have, like, two on my net. I chased her so scarily that I dropped. she, she dropped her eggs. So, all right. Let's see here. So yeah, the RoboCop ones, those are great. And they're small. They're real small. Bumblebee, Gobies, Bumblebee Tuna. Um, and then also the um, Marbled Autosynclus or Zebra Autosynclus are all awesome. Sort of oddballs. But in here, we have some fishies hatched. Man, this camera, I'm so mad that I spent a grand on this thing. Maybe I just need a different lens or software update or something. You guys can't see any of that, can you? You can't see any of the little fish in there. Um, maybe if I had an LED. Maybe it just all needs light. They're hanging out right at the surface here by my fingernail. Oh, there goes one now. And then there's another one. They're teeny. They're only a few days old. They look like little sperms. So, in any case, that's the next wave of red caps. Also, my quote-unquote blue and purple, they're really just like white and dark, dark chocolate brown, but they get called blue ram's horns um, because they look blue through the shell from above. Uh, there are some gigantic ones in here. I mean, like the size of a quarter, so kind of cool. And also, um, finally, these erythromicron are old enough again to show you guys this is what an adult erythromicron or an emerald dwarf rasbora should look like. And you guys don't need to see the stripes. You need to see the outline. And you see how they have like a hook to their belly and snout? It's almost like a salmon, like a Chinook salmon or something. Um, or, or a humpy. And right here, this guy, if you would turn profile you can make out that they've got, like, their, their snout becomes elongated. Um, and that is a sign that they are, the males can basically reproduce at will every day. And then the females of that same age, since these are all of the same litter, basically, there's a good example of, of a uh, female. She's got a big old rounded belly uh, that's very noticeable. And it's actually got a little uh, kind of dimple. See, this one is also a female. And she just laid a litter in, in another box that I'll show you in a minute. But her belly is flat. So when you see that flat belly, they either have a worm or a parasite. Or they literally just got rid of all their egg, uh, how egg bound they were. So kind of cool when they get older that they go through that like puberty phrase phase even though they can have babies at like four months old at a year to two years old at some point depending on their protein levels they go through this this kind of transformation you see that uh, where they take on a slightly different shape and they're able to um, produce way more eggs like like a hundred at a time rather than 10 or 15 at a time uh what else is going on 
So over here, uh, Eliosomas, uh, the uh, pygmy sunfish. This is their exciting life. Yep, they just live in a bowl with moss and uh, fluval stratum, and they get to eat microworms and daphnia. Pretty fun. The end. Okay, these guys, uh, this I need to clean up again, trim, but it, I'm also using it to sprout stuff. And then, oh, I'm also trying to spawn some gudgeons for y'all. So I've been spending, oh, hours a day sitting over here in a chair and just watching the gudgeons go gudgeoning. Um, and they have a little cave. They like caves. But I'm going to get them some burrows soon, some, like, pens that are burrows. By the way, while we're at it, Everybody always freaks out and they say, oh, there's some some blob killing everything in my tank. It's this, it's not that. It's just a, a fungus and bacterial combination called uh, water rot or clear rot. And it is basically, um, it's tannins that are being digested by a uh, mycelium that's actually burrowing into the wood. And mycelium is like the roots of the actual um fungi of a mushroom basically and uh if you think of it that way then this clear bloom that you get that looks like jelly more so than like a milky color if you can see that clear bloom that's the actual um dead cells and the, the what's expelled the tannins essentially so don't fear if you see that in your tank unless it's on food if it's on food then you effed up and everything's gonna die. No, uh, you're fine. So, green shrimp, green jade shrimp colony doing fine. They just hide from me, which is, you know, fun. One of them is buried back there. The one on the leaf is buried. There's nine in here. You'd think, like, where can they hide? Well, one, there's, on, there's one on the filter. There's like four up on the little pads. So, they're in there, they're surviving, they're doing okay. Also, the Neocaridina babies, the little teeny tiny babies, I wanted to see if they could survive in here with just catapa leaves and so forth, but really I'm not seeing that, you know, I put 50 in here, I'm seeing like 20 left, and it's only been two weeks. I'm also seeing a few hydra, and so this was a totally new tank, but I used an old filter, old filter floss, and then moss and stuff and, and water that was old thinking like that that would um, take care of everything and that it would feed enough of them but it looks like only the middle aged to older ones are are surviving very well but I may be wrong I, I could be just counting way off maybe there's a bunch hidden like I do see a bunch on the dragon stone in the little pockets and there are some on the glass there are some on the filter back here so i don't know we'll we'll find out later but then in here um i'm just this is the wait and see game uh i do know there were eggs on this mop um and there's some snails eggs that must have hatched in here a few days ago but on this mop in this tank let's see if we see anything um going on these are the three unheated tanks uh but right now they're all about 72 degrees and i put a block of filter um filter um polishing pad in here that's been used which is creating this kind of mulm and bacterial blah growth but i just wanted to see if it was good or bad like if it starts producing ammonia or what so far no ammonia so far it's just creating bacteria or i mean uh, nitrifying bacteria um and it's working out uh fine as far as the chemical tests show me that being said, I don't know if it's producing fungi bacteria or anything like that that then is going to rot the eggs out that are in here. But the, 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 this, okay, so the, all this stuff was floating with the pseudomagills. So the pseudomagill luminatus, I saw, I found some eggs in there. So they take 14 days usually, 10 to 20 days really. And it's on the cooler end of the spectrum right now. So, I'm going to say that it's probably going to take longer for them right now um, to hatch. Uh, but we'll see if they do. They're very teeny. So this will be one of those things that's really hard to do. 
but I literally just won't be doing anything other than adding some green water to this tank every few days and just looking at it for half an hour every few days and that's kind of it. It's it's hard. With the Battis, with the Scarlet Battis, I thought I was never going to spawn them until I left a tank for four months. And at the four month mark, all of a sudden, these sesame seed sized fish just appear out of freaking nowhere and are like, hey, we're all, we're all good. We're live. Take care of us now. Um, so, yeah. Also, the tank's purling really nice. All right, okay. I've been ignoring the chat. I'm sorry, guys. I, I got carried away. Uh, thank you so much, Fishy Fun 57 Oh, that's so much fun to say. Um, okay, how big is... Oh, how big are these containers over here? They're all 2.5 uh, gallons. Uh, yes, I've called it water rot before. Water rot, clear rot. It's very common in low TDS water, by the way. Um, Hal and Balor. Um... And it's, but it's not harmful. Like, actually, snails love it. Uh, how many emerald dwarf rasboras can you put in a 10 gallon? Um, honestly, if it's well planted, a 10 gallon, I, I fit easily 20 in there. But you don't want to start like that if you're new. Um, if, if you haven't been in the hobby long, because you're going to need good aeration. You're going to need to do a lot of water changes, like water changes. All the time. You could probably fit a hundred in a tank, honestly, if you did water changes daily uh, and had good um, circulation of air and and water. But in here, I've got eight plus twenty other fish in a ten gallon, honestly. And it's all about doing water changes, having some aeration. Although right now I'm turning the heat up, and what I did was I put them in the unheated tanks, and those have low TDS. Whereas this is, I'm raising the TDS with coral, and then all of a sudden, when they get tossed into the little cold tank with super high aeration compared to this slow aeration, they're gonna think that it's the wet season and their 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 little river's been flooded. So they'll start going crazy, um, having babies within a few days. Uh, so it's kind of in a in a disheveled state at the moment, but. You can easily fit 10 in there as a new hobbyist um, if you've got plants taking care of things. Pseudomagills, David, are they hardy? They are not the most hardy fish in the world. There are some tricks about them, but, um, you know, they're, yeah, they're not the most hardy fish in the world. Uh, they are for, I should say, like, if you've got their water parameters dialed in, then yeah, they do actually really well, and they're like not really any work at all. But they are um, very prone to jumping. That's one thing. So you don't want to scare them, or you want to cover the ends of the tank so that they don't get a running jump at least. So if they jump, they kind of jump out, flop out sideways, which they won't get as much air. Um, air as in jumping air. Uh, and then you also... Um, want to feed them live food if you want them to spawn and you want them to look really good where you get the blue and the orange or you know where you get their best coloration they really do respond best to live like brine shrimp and things like that uh here you can really see the difference between male and female samfong rasbora who i also put together and had hatch out um and that that was going pretty well um so hopefully those fry will be making an appearance soon they're down in this tank and in this tank this is my oldest tank right here four years uh i think is the oldest continuous running tank but this one just panda loaches and um we had the abatis in here that i think i got all of them out and i think now it's just erythromicron in here that have babies but i'll show you the baddest um, spawn who are now six months old so what that means is that they went into suspended animation of some sort their eggs did um, and they they didn't hatch so these are them the little the little uh, suns uh, or sorry the little sesame seed shaped dudes hanging out here and 
you can see they're pretty flighty they're kind of jittery but unless they're being chased they stay at the bottom so there was another question i saw about can i keep endlers and erythromicron fish together oh he's taking the elevator up um and the answer is you can but endlers are going to grow exponentially faster than erythromicron erythromicron are kind of slow growing fish honestly compared to endlers and live bears also by the way i've got this yellow shrimp that came from the line of the red riding hoods I don't even have any yellow shrimp in the shrimp room right now, so it's kind of odd that there there's a yellow shrimp in my life. Um, green is the closest color line that I have to it, so odd. But yeah, I mean, when you're growing out little fry and fish, um, if you can match their water parameters, I mean, uh, erythromicron do like a little bit uh, basic water sometimes or at least a little more um, carbonate like carbonate in their water it doesn't need to be basic actually that was the wrong thing to say um, but having carbonate in the water will turn it basic unless you have a whole lot of organic leaf matter in which case then you can have actually high carbonate like limestone residue type things uh, and actual high acidity which um, you know what I hate about these ramstorns is they poop so much. I have to clean up their poop like a dog every day with this little baster. Or my nitrates go kind of cuckoo because I don't have any fast growing plants with them. That is getting tiresome. I hate having to go after all this. Uh, I mean it's light enough that I can like kind of kick everything up by squeezing a few times. And then just sucking in that little cloud of of debris and then I get most of it uh, I could use a siphon but I've got my baby shrimp in there like a genius so yeah okay so now that we're almost at the end of the hour let's go upstairs let's go upstairs let's take a look at the big tanks um, and let's talk about fragile fish or fish that I don't recommend the new folks or impatient you know what I love my dr. pepper I'm in trouble. I'm forgetting things, guys. You gotta help me out here. You gotta help me out here. Sorry if I'm missing questions. Um, if I ever miss a question, you can always bribe me with a super chat. Although I hate that dynamic. But somebody mentioned it like, hey man, I tried to get a hold of you twice and you didn't answer me. I'm sorry, I'm a talker. I'm a talker, I talk. It's coffee talk. So either spam the message until everyone else in the chat says shut up um, you know, or just hang tight and say it again later, or you can throw a super chat and I'll, I'll get it. Then it'll interrupt my screen. <clears throat> Otherwise, I just kind of can't read as much as you guys have going on. Fishy fun 57. You're saying that, um, what temperature am I bringing my pond fish in at? Um, I have them close to the house, so it gets down to 35, 40 degrees at night for four hours in the early morning, but, hmm. but the water stays over 50 degrees in the tank because it's been getting 80 in the day still. So, I mean, uh, my, I don't know the answer. Uh, it depends on the species. Guppies seem to do fine. Rice fish seem to do fine. Um, and then also, um, Neocaridina will usually do okay. They're, they're all kind of, uh, think about it if they live in the foothills. Think about where your fish are from. And if they live in the foothills or mountains or in lakes with deep lake water, uh, they're going to definitely dive down into the cooler water. And if it's a moving river or creek and they live 4,000 feet up, like Lake Inlay or something, you know, up in the, the hills surrounding the lake, that water is going to get cold. Even if it's 100 degrees out, um, it's still rainfall water that has uh, percolated through the limestone uh, hillsides there. And then it comes down through that which is cool underground and comes out on these springs and creeks 
and kind of fills together and then goes into the lake and then spills out of the lake. Um, so some of the erythromicron, CPDs, danios, a lot of those fish that live in the streams and foothills, panda loaches, uh, rice fish, white cloud minnows, and meteor minnows, even though they live in a subtropic or tropic area, they live at a height. Same with some of the like pseudomagills that live in Papua New Guinea, high up in the river, um, in valleys that are... The rivers come from hillsides uh, and drain into valleys. So even though they may... Um, they may not online it may not say that they're they're good with the temperature but a lot of times they are for a couple hours especially if it's gradual you're not picking it up and throwing it into cool water um, they have stress cortisol and otherwise uh, hormone reactions that allow them to um, get prepared for that and most uh, cyprinids now they're finding as well as carp uh, have some sort of natural antifreeze in their body. And so even though that could be an early adaptation left over or a vestigial evolutionary trait, it's probably recent enough. Um, we know that, for instance, danios, uh, like zebra danios, if you get wild strains that aren't too fancy, like those long fin strains, those won't do well outside in the cold. But uh, original zebra danios from the wild, wild caught ones, they'll actually live under the ice if if they've gradually gotten that cold through the season. Um, so yes, many will die, but a, a, a number, a population, a percentage will survive under the ice, uh, which is cool. Uh, they have a natural antifreeze, like I said, in their blood. So in any case... You can tell it's humid when the can's all sweaty. So, update up here real quick. I couldn't say no to the blue panda dumbo ear guppies. They're fine. Uh, the cohaka, or basically orange, black, white. Kind of like, it's like Japanese for calico uh, koi. Um, or orange and white koi. And uh, these guys are the little... Um, sword tail platy mixes and they're so cute but I only have females so I need to get some male sword tail albino kohaka okay so show you that real quick uh, the light is terrible because of how bright it is outside right now um, I thought I would mention real quick this tank no water changes just water top offs and we have a couple baby rice fish even in a one gallon bowl, we have six adults, we have seven neocaridinas, and yes, the other night, I, I looked for them all, I poked around with chopsticks and I found them, they're all in here. None of the plants came out immersed, like I had hoped, for it to look beautiful and spill out all over the place, but um, all of them are alive, which is very cool. Um, so yeah, uh, then... Over here, um, we've got, I'm letting the water evaporate because I actually want the um, <laughs> the panda quarries to spawn again. Just quarries have been in kind of short supply at the local pet stores, so uh, they need to spawn. Also, Sergio, he's doing fine. Everybody wants to check in on Sergio every once in a while, so he's my boy. He's doing fine. Um he hasn't seemed to be getting much better, or bigger. <laughs> he's still, he's getting better. But the three females uh, rotate. She's going to be next. I will bet you money on it. She just had a clutch with him two weeks ago. He ate him. She had a clutch with him. So this is a weird harem situation, which angelfish, I mean, maybe other people have experience different than mine. But for me, my angelfish usually pick a mate and stick with it. Uh, Sergio has been the exception to that in that he killed his first two mates and now that I gave him three he like doesn't know what to do like he doesn't know I mean I think he it's not an option to kill them because they, they'll all gang up on him it's funny they do um, but then they fight amongst themselves when he's not bugging them also uh, I don't know if you can see because the reflections suck right now on this tank but I have some baby cribs going again um, 
male and female. This is my old pair. They're coming up on three years old now. Um, and they're the hybrid of the Bapindi and Pulcher giant mix. So um, they're doing well. Her She's all um, colorful and she looks like she's ready to burst again. So I don't know what's going on. Even though they've got in tow, they've got about seven babies that survived uh, this crazy tank, which is fine. That's about how many I care to survive to adulthood, honestly, because uh, it's hard to catch them. And two, this tank's pretty full. Um, the reed tetras are doing really good. They've had a couple babies. It's just uh, one in a million odds, probably. Well, one in like 10,000, maybe. And then all the quarries are right down here in the corner at the moment. But they've been spawning because I turned the heater off. And I'm going to do a big water change. Uh, and then the glow light tetras, they're same as same as they ever were. Same as they ever were. So if you get that reference, great. Um, okay, let's talk about the thing I said in the title. Oh, and also, my valiant guard pigeon, Peppy. It's not the noise a pigeon makes. Um, he is very good, and he is doing his thing to keep the fish from jumping, which is just great. What a great bird you are, Peppy. Um, he's been hanging over the edge, and now the guppies have wised up, and they don't give a damn about him, neither does Rami. But all the little jumpy fish, all my tetras and pseudomagills and pencil fish, they've all been like, oh, I know there's a bird up there and he's going to eat my face, so I'm going to stay down low. So no more Kochu's uh, tetras jumping, no more, uh, uh, no more jelly bean tetras jumping. It's been good. It's been good. Um, but Peppy stands guard. I might have to like take him away for a while and then bring him back. Also, this sword fern is going bonkers. Red Prince Kleiner sword. Uh, the shrimp are still alive in here, which is bizarre. I don't know how they're surviving with garamis and everything else in here, cribs. And then the uh, Loganondromi bold eye, which was getting chewed the hell up by something. The mystery, I think, is solved in that I see pretty healthy leaves that one was already messed up but the new one leaves in the center look pretty healthy and i think it it was the um the uh the cribs and the uh albino and citrus that needed more wood in its in its diet that was eating that for for it um so I don't know. I think that's what it was. It stopped, so yay. Oh, and, oh, and the other one I took out was the algae eater. So I know for a fact that these little holes that are in in order, like one, two, three, four, five, those are from my reticulated Siamese al algae eater. He was eating algae off the leaves. I watched him do those. Uh, but the big old, like, eating half the leaf, I think that's either the bristlenose and cistrus, or I think it is the... Um, it was the normal cribs. The albino cribs are still really small, and they seem really gentle, and I watch them, and even though they hang out in the plant, they seem to use it as cover, as well as my L138s that hide in the rock and plant area for cover, too. Um, also, update. If anybody has a male consortis, nanochromus consortis, or teglisi, uh, that's the other one that can spawn with these fish, and it's arguably just a different strain of the same species, depending on which ichthyologist you ask and, and who's listening in on their answer. Um, so they definitely hybridize, though. Uh, also, remember how I said I was reupholstering my wife's chairs? Good story. That was two weeks ago. She's not happy. Okay, so let's let's talk here, guys. Let's let's talk about fish. We're going to go a little long today. Let's talk about fish. I'm going to sit down. We're going to sit down. We're going to calm down, Alex. It's going to be okay. The world may end, but I got fish. All right. So, <clears throat> fragile fish. 
I wrote a list of 20 fish, and I'm going to go through the list, and then I will tell you why I consider them fragile or not the best fish for new people, because they end up dead. Whether that's the new person's fault or the fish's fault for being delicate, uh, it's the fish's fault, yeah. Oh, I put it in my tank, stupid fishes. It was its fault for being so hard to live. Okay, so if you have questions, uh, let me know. Yes, autosynclases do die. I have a theory about that, and it's the same theory. Actually, Corey from Aquarium Co-op had a good video about um, neon uh, tetra death, blue neon tetra death, which there's a disease called blue neon tetra disease. But it kills a very, very small fraction of them. And the main thing that is killing them is that there's like 200 fish in a 10 gallon tank at the pet store. And there's like 10,000 in a 100 gallon tank in the wholesaler. And they're being flown around. And then everybody wants to feed the least amount as possible and not medicate them. And they're small fish to begin with. And then when you take 50% of the fish and sell them each week, but then get 50% more, you're going to have eventually some oddball fish that are probably from like eight changes ago that are undernourished and just getting less healthy, less healthy, less healthy, and then spreading disease. So that's another factor that I think like autosynclus, they do the same thing with them. Uh, the feeder guppies, they do the same thing with them. Uh, it, so I think that is a problem that is occurring in the hobby. Um, uh, anyone experience rams, horn snails, eating floating plants? Never had an issue before the summer. They're attached to my water lettuce and frog bit. Usually they're eating biofilm, alfux, uh, algae off of those things. They're not eating them themselves. However, um, I could be wrong. They might be eating them themselves. Uh, but they'll also surf upside down. They like to eat the protein that's collected on the top of the water, whether that's little oils from the fish and biofilms or from food you feed or from dead bugs um, or from plants, oils. Um, when you see the snails surfing, which is when they're upside down and their foot and mouth are right, like you look down on the tank and you see their mouth and their foot upside down cruising across the water, that's called surfing, and they're usually eating the protein film off of it, which is that thing that looks like gasoline or kind of a milky cloud, uh, depending on how much there is. And water agitation should change that, but water agitation is not good for those floating plants. But I pause it, pause it, not, at, not I pause it, I pause it the idea that if you have enough water lettuce and you have enough of the uh like anything red root floater water lettuce frog bit uh duck uh duck wart that you will it will outgrow the pace at which any snails are going to eat it unless you have a crazy amount of snails because that stuff can grow a spangle like from a mother plant it can grow a spangle that of the size of a quarter a day in peak sun what do you do when there are too many Endler breeds in one tank? I only have three tanks and I can go to female and they can go to fem wait, have three tanks that they can go to female ratio to male. Um I would say um that oh, mystery snails, yeah, they will actually eat vegetation. So will rabbit snails. Sorry, I was thinking of um Malaysian trumpet snails, pond snails, uh, well snails, um, uh, bladder snails, ram's horn snails. Mm, apple snails will eat it too, but not usually a ton. They usually they like decaying stuff, so hopefully that. Um, <laughs> instead of hanging ten, they're hanging mouth. It's true. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as the endlers, I don't mix breeds unless I want them to hybridize. If you don't care that they're hybridizing, then whatever. Um, really, once th the ratio for endlers is for when you're breeding for high quality. So if you want, f so the males will relentlessly, literally until they are exhausted and they drop dead will bug a female that is putting out pheromones that for, for spawning. 
uh, or for being impregnated. So literally, um, they will not stop, and that's why they say you usually put two or three females per male if you can. Uh, however, that gives you a lot of babies. Once you get past two trios, if that makes sense, so past six, seven, eight fish, it kind of stops mattering because the males will go after the, the most popular female, and then the other males will fight off like the, the alpha male or whoever's deemed the most attractive male to the females will have to fight for her honor, sort of. And so he'll follow her around, both harassing her, but also trying to chase the other males. And like three or four young juvenile males will follow that trio. And um, soon it gets diffused and the males start fighting each other. The females uh, kind of can break away, except for that one poor prime female that's the alpha female. Uh, sometimes she will get harassed and really stressed. So you can rotate her out or put her in a little um, holding pen of her own, especially if she's going to give birth, and that kind of helps. But a lot of people will get rid of the males, but it's hard if you're trying to breed for certain traits and the traits are in the males because you're going to want lots of males to see if the trait's visible. So you can also do a, a maternity tank where you use those um, floating contraptions. There's actually a link, I think, in the description uh, to and the Amazon link to to the product. But basically, you're uh, you're putting the floating basket with slats small enough for the fry to get out into the bigger tank. But then the mom stays in the in the basket, and that allows for the babies to break free and mom not to eat them. But if you do that, you can put a couple females in there together. And yes, they need to swim, they need to have water current and things like that, but they'll be okay for a couple weeks to a month just in time out um, to give them a rest. So that's what I recommend. Um, exactly, uh, G-Bear, that's a good point. Just by moving around, you know, floating plants and things, if you have um, pseudomagills uh, or rainbow fish, it's very common to just, if you put them into a tank with nothing or a tank with bottom uh, feeding fish, for instance, then very frequently you'll you'll notice, oh look, there's a little fry. Same with rice fish too. Okay, fragile fish, I'm gonna do it. I swore I was gonna and I got it before I go because I'm not a liar, okay? All right, fragile fish, 14,000 subscribers. Thank you so much again, you guys. You know, I waited for it. It went up to 13,999 and went down to like 13,992 and then up and down, up and down. Finally, now it's going up because there's a lot of bots that try to get on here. If you guys see bots commenting on my channel and it lets you flag them, get rid of them. There are all these dumb, like, uh, sex bots coming to take over my channel uh, in the comments that were like, hey, at a minute and 22 seconds, you want to have a good time? Or that's my favorite. That's so hot. Kissy face. Uh, if you see a lot of um, emoticons, a lot of little winky faces or hearts or lips, it's probably spam. It's probably like rat Russian hackers or Nigerian 401, 401, 401, I can't remember, 419 scams. Uh, just that what the, they want you to do is they want you to go to their profile because there's usually like a hot girl picture or a hot boy picture or a sexy fish. Those cr clever sons of a, you know, they figured out that some of us aren't going to click on the sexy girl picture. We know what they're up to. But if they put like a killer, like a uh, rare angel, altum angel fish, yeah, I might look up the person and see what's going on. And then in the description, what they want you to do is click on a hyperlink. A timestamp hyperlink should take you to a timestamp in the video. That's why you can't use hyperlinks in other people's videos that are active on YouTube. But if you go to their biography, all their little clone comments feed back to one mothership page. And if you go and click on something like check out my website, that's where they're gonna infect your computer with crap. So I just wanted to warn you, if you see that on my site or any other Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, whatever, uh, comments that just seem weird and or sexual, does anybody get a comment sexually on me or on fish? No. So f figure that out. It's it's something's off. I would. 
Oh, my wife says she would. Gross. Right, guys? Gross. Thanks, honey. Uh, somebody said, sexy fish at one o'clock. Check it out. Winky face, fish, heart, tongue out. Okay, fragile fish. We're going to go for it. Oh, you guys cracked me up. Thank you guys for cheering me up, too. Not just for being subscribers. I need to stop, like, getting so emphatic. Not even my little gimbal rig can can uh, put up with how spastic I am. By the way, my wife pointed this out. I am Scottish, like, half, basically, or a third. And my facial hair is turning orange. It was blonde until I was in my 20s. And then, then it turned, like, taupe, like, gray. And now it's orange and turning red. And uh, I can feel my soul leaving as I become ginger. No offense to you gingers in the chat. Uh, or people named Ginger in the chat. I know there's a few of you, too. Uh, Y'all good. Okay. So, number one on my list. Uh, or Jerry, either. That's a close name. Okay. Number one on my list are the orange rummy nose rasboras. Those things die like guppies multiply. Uh, Scotty, what's going on, brother? So good to see you in the live stream. I love, uh, getting into the river with you. The live stream, doing some fish casting. You guys, if you haven't checked out Scottish Aquatics, dude setting up a killer homestead, uh, grow up for aquatic plants very soon. Uh, and he already does sell, uh, aquatic plants. So check out Scottish Aquatics channel and his info on Facebook. I highly recommend him and it. Uh, he's got big plans. Okay. And he's based out of Colorado now. Uh, and he left me in Washington to die alone. Sad. With my wife! Uh, okay. She says, oh, I'm out of here. Okay. So, orange rummy nose rasboras. They need a rare condition of water. This is my theory. They need high um, sodium bicarbonate or ba baking soda. They need limestone. They need um, calcium in the water. They need a high TDS, but they also like acidity because it's water filtered through granite and limestone mountains that's rainwater up in the tropical hills of around Lake Inlay and around uh, Myanmar, Thailand. And then throughout the basin, it, as it percolates through that rock, it becomes like TDS 600 of, of hard, um, hard water with that calcification and carbon in it. But there's also jungle and then there's agricultural uh, stuff that's been there for thousands of years, like rice paddy veg growth and uh, floating farms, which are pretty cool. Check out Lake I-N-L-E. Inlay, um, and they, they for thousands of years have been farming with these woven mats. Side note, Mexico City used to be a lake. Where the entire city is now used to be a lake, and they actually built so many floating gardens on the lake that the lake's gone, and now there's these canals, and there's a lot of goodyad species, as well as things like CPOs and crawfish, crayfish, uh, types of freshwater crustacean that live in uh, Mexico City in their sewers and in their ditches in the outskirts of the city because there's no lake there anymore. Uh, no big lake. But there was a big lake when like the Spaniards arrived. There was still a big lake with a palace in the center and um, gardens going out into it because why dig ditches and have to bring water out into a desert or into a hot area might as well bring the garden to the water if you can on woven reed mats. Uh, also, guys, if you haven't done it yet, please hit that little thumbs up or thumbs down. You can hit the thumbs down. That's cool, too. Um, but it just shows you interacted. I mean, y'all have sat here and listened to me talk my ass off for whatever, an hour and a half. So a thumbs up or down would be great uh, if you could do that for me. I know they make it really hard and confusing because you have to get out of the chat to go to it, and then sometimes you leave the freaking stupid live stream and uh, tell it to YouTube. All right, number two on the list. Red tail. Hey, honey. Hi. Hello. 
That's my wife. She's easy to keep, unlike these fish we're talking about. Okay. Next on the list, red tail catfish, Raphael catfish, silver dollar uh, fish, and bala sharks. Rainbow sharks and denison barbs are kind of in there too, but not quite. I mean, a lot of people have big enough tanks for those. But those first five, they get to be like 300 pounds. Same with uh, pruna sharks and things like that. They get so huge. It's just a terrible um, thing that they sell them for like six bucks at Petco or PetSmart. Don't do it. Don't buy the red tail catfish. They get huge. They eat babies. They eat goats. I have like an X because of how concerned I am for you guys about knowledge. Knowledge. Um, red triangle. Hello. What is the red triangle? Is that China, Russia, and North Korea? Red triangle. I think we have commies in our chat, people. All right. They're fluoridating our water. Fluoride. Fluoridation. Taking our bodily fluids. If anybody can name that movie in the next... 30 seconds, I might give you something. Okay, so next up on the list, pea puffers. They're great, but everybody thinks they just eat blood worms or just eat snails. They feed them pure protein, which is really only like 40 to 60% of their diet. They get bloated bellies. They get a um, problem like gout, essentially, for fish. And then they get bacterial infections and die. David, you are a boss uh fake name hello also um but david you got it correct now i'll have to think of a good oh dwight's got it thomas has got it there must be a delay i wonder how quick y'all were good good thinking thank you guys well now i've got three brilliant people in here okay remind me next time because I, I need to think of something i'll uh extort Fake name, what's up? Uh, I talked about you earlier, you know. Uh, I'll have to think of a way to extort aquatic arts. Who, they're my friends, I swear. But they do have the gift cards. So, um, as always, I want to thank you guys when we're at the 14,000 subscriber. 15,000 probably was a better benchmark, but why the hell not? I wanted to celebrate 14,000. Um, you know, thank you for watching, for commenting, the sharing... That is great. Um, but also, thank you so much for shopping with Aquatic Arts. Uh, it started as a really casual thing where I just liked their company. I liked that they donated to uh, tanks and teachers in the classroom. I liked that they donated to uh, homeless shelters for battered women and children that are in hiding, essentially. And, uh, and men, too, but it's mostly women and children. And then uh, I also really loved that they give back to conservation and, and things like that. And on top of that, you know, they quarantine their shrimp for like up to 90 days. They breed and bred their own shrimp there. Um, a lot of the species like the, um, gold nebula and the Vibalti greens, um, the Neos and the Caradinas, I don't think they do, but they will again soon because they've expanded because you guys have shopped there. And I know their shipping's kind of expensive, but you guys can get 15% off your first order, 10% off after every order after that. And I'm going to try, I'm going to fight for you guys to try to maybe get like a 15% no matter what offer or something like that. Something special, you know? Um, <laughs> red triangle. Uh, something special for you guys uh, upcoming, especially for their expansion. Once their expansion opens, uh, they're going to be up there with the bigger distributors. They started with, I mean, with my channel, they've grown too. Just as we've both grown uh, together, you know, they've been able to send me more stuff, like the gobies. I didn't have to pay for those gobies. That was rad. So um, they do that. And then also, instead of the cash, I like to take that 4% profit and do giveaways. So that's how I got to give away a couple hundred dollar gift cards. That's how we gave away $1,800 at Christmas last year. Um, in their gear and and uh, fish and gift cards. So uh, thank you guys for supporting Aquatic Arts. I really do believe in them. If there's ever a reason where I hear that I should stop or learn of something, I, you know, that's it. I am, I, I will be honest with you and I promise you guys that. 
um, with anybody that I mention on this channel uh, or any product or service or, or even fish species. So when we're talking about uh, fish species, yeah, you want to wait till you have a good size purchase because they ship overnight. It is expensive, but they have very, very good quality breeding stock. So if your goal is to start breeding fish to sell or shrimp, I almost, unless you know the breeder, like uh, Greg Sage or, you know, somebody who like who really knows um, or Gary Lang and Rainbow Fish who really has like a wild collected fish or whatever um, they have. They search out the best quality fish that they can and they also buy from hobbyists. So when when the uh, the the virus that I can't say on a live stream hit, uh, they still had more fish than most people and more shrimp than most people because they've been buying from local clubs they've been making these connections for a while okay that's enough of the infomercial it's over okay so thank you and scotty i saw that you responded uh i know it, it took a couple minutes but i love you too okay all right so wait you moved from washington to colorado what are the two commonalities between these things and you're setting up a grow up down there for aquatic plants. Likely story. Still check out his site, guys. Whatever he's selling these days. Uh, no, he's a good guy. Um, okay, so pea puffers were on the list. Next is going to be wood cats. Wood cats are awesome, but they're nocturnal. They hide. And they hide in areas that don't get cleaned and they'll burrow into the substrate. Most people don't keep their tanks gravel siphoned and vacuumed. Uh, that's the gravel si siphoning and vacuum motion um, well enough. And it, there's a lot of bacteria there. A lot of it's good, but they'll get cuts when they get scared in the day. They'll dive down and on their bellies in particular, they'll, they'll get cuts. Same with ancestress and wood eating um, plecos and things. They can hurt themselves on like rocky substrates or wooden substrate uh, features, decor. Your little diver's treasure chest is killing the wood cats, people. Um, it opens up cuts and they get sick and they die. Um, uh, you haven't seen your wood cat in three years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then people also get stressed and they look for the wood cat and they tear the tank apart. They kick up all sorts of bacteria and stuff. So the moral of the story is wood cats are fine. They are a little prone to bacteria. They do eat poo and whatever's on the ground. Everyone's like, there's no fish that actually eats poo as its diet. That's just absurd. I've seen wood cats eat poop. Literally, I've watched other fish poop at night and then eat it. So they do that, and uh, I don't know, maybe they spit it out an hour later when I'm not looking. Maybe they have evolved a special poo sack to hide the poo in their throat so that their owners can't see that they don't actually eat poo. But according to scientists, no fish actually eat poo. They do. Okay, so they get stomach, uh, they get, you know, just like puffer fish, just like any bottom dwelling fish especially that's from the wild, and almost all wood cats are from the wild, except for honeycomb wood cats and mm, upside down wood cats. Um, they, they are bred in captivity a bit, uh, but they definitely eat a lot of snails and parasites and things in the wild. So, you know, Dwight, you're right. Dogs do it, why wouldn't fish? Because fish are so much smarter than dogs. Okay, so next up on my list is anything albino. Unfortunately, when we breed fish to be albino, and I mean albino, not leucistic. These guys, these, uh, wherever they are, these leucistic. These guys, leucistic. But um, albino, they uh, don't actually... Um, have the same integrity of their organs and things. In fact, there's many kinds of albinism, and one is your organs, your soft tissue, including the eyes, uh, and they don't have the same ability to see. Uh, they can get picked on easier. And also, one good thing about them, though, is you notice um, 
contusions and lesions on their skin a lot easier. So gill flukes or things like that. Um, yeah, so in any case, they're, um, they're just genetically not a very good thing. Uh, they, they're they not what was designed to survive in the wild for the most part. Um, there are white or, or blonde leucistic genes where they have like yellow and white coloration and a little bit of color here and there. Those are much healthier. True albinism, especially the kind that's uh, total encompassing, that is internal as well. And so like organ tissue lining and things like that gets inflamed, has problems, and humans with that have a lot of health problems also. Um, Martin Dollinger, how did you learn so much? Um, I think somebody dropped me on my head when I was a kid, but I was dropped onto a, a flash drive that had the world's knowledge that's useless on it. Everything useless. And I think I hit my head and it plugged in and, uh, yeah, I think that's what happened. So that and um, when I used to drink, I used to play trivia everywhere in town in college for free, like, you know, McDougan's Pub Bucks. And I'd get, you know, 20 bucks for winning so I could eat a hamburger two days and then get free beer. Um, so we'd go play every trivia night in town uh, in a town of like 100,000. Uh, back then, it was like 80,000 people. But uh, we had, like, a, a ringer team that would always win everywhere to the point where they kicked us out. Um, Amy, oh, I'm sorry to hear your Pictus cats um, died. Oh, that is bunny. Oh, that was a bummer. Bummy, bummy luck. Um, you've tried three times and failed. Well... I would suggest it might be your tap water. You may have something like, I mean, maybe lead or mercury. Have you have you had a an assay, a s s a y, <laughs> not in never mind. Uh, in any case, have you had an assay done on your your tap water or even your municipal water? Might be good to do. Um, if you've tried three different times, has it all been in the same tank? That's the other question. And has it all been the same supplier? Because it could be that they're not treating them for parasites. As I said, uh, with those catfish, a lot of times they don't eat um, the best stuff for them. They eat rotting corpses and carcasses of fish and snails and plants, which, you know, that's great that they do. They, they're a cleanup crew, but they'll get whatever parasite those things have. So it's important to quarantine those to get, like, dog or pig or freaking elephant dewormer and make sure to deworm the heck out of those catfish that that are bottom dwelling mouth breathers okay um let's see here yes actually you know you're right dan but uh the albino quarries are an exception to the rule they're very healthy they're very stable i don't think they're true albino usually a lot of the albino quarries have well they do have the pink eyes though I don't know what the story is there. They are scaled fish, though, a plate armor fish, so maybe that helps keep it in, but, um, yeah. They, they are pretty healthy. Albino catfish, which are usually Aeneas catfish that have a mutation that was found in the 70s, they have been bred long enough in captivity that they are pretty healthy. There are a few exceptions, you know, goldfish and things like that, too. Um, all right. Um, Guppies, Daniels, and Corys and Plecos do awesome. You probably have, well, if Guppies do awesome, there's a good chance that you have hard water. They usually, usually catfish like acidic water with lots of tannins. That's almost all catfish, unless they're like Cynodonus or African Rift Lake catfish so i would check that i mean more botanicals maybe um yeah i'm sorry that's a bummer though um that's how i feel about wood cats i've kept them several times and twice they've all gotten sick from bacterial infections and died once was i i swear not my fault it was vibrio which is like a terrible infection of flesh eating proportions for fish okay so next on the list is long fin guppies. 
Um, so, long fin guppies, great fish, lots of fun. It's just those long fins, they nip at each other, they get infected, they get fin rot really easily. If, if you keep an eye on that or you don't keep the density so high or don't keep other fish that eat that, you'll be fine. Um, so, uh, yes, agree with Martin. Uh, make that aquarium into tea. Try that, you know, make it black water. Tannins, tannins, tannins. Um, and knowledge. Okay. Um, the next one, flower horns. Hybrids. Hybrids can either be healthier or they can be craptastic. And flower horns, basically if it has a nuchal hump that's bigger as a hybrid, it's probably not going to do well. Um, a lot of times their stomach is like crushed up. Their rib cage is all distended and messed up. Uh, and they just have all sorts of problems. And, you know, they, they look like they've got dropsy. 24-7, and that's like before the problems start uh, in a lot of them. So just be careful with like parrot, you know, and and uh, like different parrot fish, different peacock bass uh, combos, and also, of course, the flower horn invented in Singapore in the 90s. Well, actually late 80s, but 90s uh, is when they became a thing. Next on the list is going to be gobies. So even though I love them, you see that I keep them, I've got four species right now, five species right now. Um, they need they need um, biofilm. Not anything you can buy at the store, really. They need biofilm and algae, um, plankton more than algae even, and they need tons of aeration or water agitation. It's kind of the same thing, honestly. Uh, and most people won't do that, and they'll literally starve to death, and it's sad, because they have a super cute little face that looks like the Geico Gecko. Why would you starve the, gar the Geico Gecko to death, you monsters? Okay, moving on. Uh, pakus and piranhas. Now, everyone thinks of the red belly piranha. There's actually like 33 species of piranha. Um, last I checked. But... People feed them like meat nonstop, and yeah, they do that. Uh, they, they they can eat meat like no other, but they also eat fruit and other things, and they also need vitamins. So you need to be supplementing that, or get a food designed to feed them, or maybe you shouldn't keep them because this is America and it's illegal to do so. Even though um, you know I don't judge. If you have one, I'd like to see it honestly, but I mean they're just kind of hard to take care of. Um, also, I've seen a lot of people cut themselves on them when they're feeding and messing around with them, um, especially in high school. I knew a couple people with them, and uh, they'd always get nipped. Not like you're going to get killed by piranhas if you go swimming with them. Like, that's an old myth, but if you're already bleeding, they will come and check it out and, and nibble on you, and it's no good. Uh, they're very sharp teeth. But they just, they get big, too. I mean, they're going to get the size of a little football dog, a, a 50 yarder dog. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that, everyone who loves dogs. Um, they're gonna get the same size as like um, Tuffy, or wait, Tuffy? Toto, not the band. They don't get that big. That's like an Arapaima. But like, like not the I bless the rains down in Africa, but the, and your little dog too, that Toto. So you don't need fish getting that big when you're new at fish keeping, or most of the time, if you're fish keeping, unless you're like an evil supervillain, then load up on piranhas and red tail uh, catfish and pruna sharks and Raphael catfish and shovel nose and giraffe catfish and all the other crap that, that uh, evil supervillains need. Uh, it's actually a tax write-off. Okay, next we've got... The Ivan Stoff. Ivan Stoff. Uh, and that is a pseudomagill. McGill. That's a beautiful little rainbow fish that likes um, it likes brackish water. And honestly, you could throw all the puffers and other fish that are brackish into this because people just have a hard time keeping that um, little uh, mm, 
equilibrium the exact same and steady for them. And really, uh, keeping a tank steady is so much more important than matching the, you know, when you buy a fish and it's got the ingredients and it's got the instructions stapled to it, um, you don't need to match those exactly. Consistency ends up being much more important. So providing a consistent, non-pathogenic um, home for them, less stressful home for them, and a balanced diet, those things will ensure survival and health way more than um, trying to, to get that 8.2 with a GH of 7 and a KH of 4. Oh no, the KH went to 3. And then you dump a bunch of chemicals in and then your fish is effed. Okay, next, Neon Tetras. We already, already discussed that. Uh, there's just too many put together. And they're the most popular pet fish in the world. Still love them. Still think you should buy them. But just look for the healthiest ones and make them get them. Don't just let them scoop out any old fish. You know, that's why you tip your fish tender after a meal. Okay, next up, goldfish. Now, goldfish get dropsy. They get eye problems and they need lots of water they produce ammonia and this like slime like there's no tomorrow uh from their body and so you really need to um treat them right do your research if you have a pond great if you have a really well aerated tank that's like 40 gallons cool you can own two goldfish until they die but they get big they get eight inches to a foot long sometimes and they produce Per pound for pound, if you were to compare a chili rasbora and a goldfish, or even a guppy, or even a pleco, a plecos, which are messy as hell, um, they are going to be producing something on the order of 10 times more ammonia and nitrites, nitrates, and just, um, they produce this slimy stuff that comes off, uh, like snot. Uh, okay. Moving on, wood-loving plecos. Because nobody feeds them right, you need to get like rapashi or morning wood or old, 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 um, speaking of plecos, uh, people just, I mean, you need to feed them food that has good fiber and tannins in it, if not that. So like zucchini and um, things with thick skin. Don't blanch everything for them. And, uh, and then also just make sure they're getting their, their nutrients. These are fish that they evolved to chew on wood and to um, masticate that and get the vitamins, the tannins, and the uh, various uh, humic acids out of there. Okay, next, pygmy sunfish, the new and up-and-coming fish. Uh, Basically all native fish, cold water fish from America in general. Flag fish die pretty easily too because people keep them at like 78 degrees, like those stupid heaters that don't have a knob. So that's another one. Uh, it's, it's usually user error. But once your fish is too hot or unhappy and stressed, they die so much easier. Okay, then there are erythromicrons. They die pretty easily too. They get very stressed very easily. They need a very planted tank. They need a little bit of uh, TDS and some uh, some of that, but they also need some acidity uh, and tannins and things like that. So they kind of need a weird mix, just like uh, the rummy nose rasboras do. Moving on down, moving on down. Shellies. So shellies, shell dwellers, they're great little fish, I think. There's really three main species in the hobby that people keep. But um, they're great little fish, but people just uh, kind of get lazy on making sure their water's okay, or they want to add plants so they'll change the water parameters just a smidge. And really, like goldfish and shellies, there's very few plants. Maybe, maybe Anubius, maybe some like Cypress Hellfry or something like that. Um, maybe a Nicaea Gold could live with them. But really, for the most part, it's too salty, too um, calcium and carbon laden. So you just got to do without real plants. You could add fake plants because, um, yeah. 
So Shelly's are one that, you know, people also are like, what are they doing? They're, are, what's going on? They'll take the shells and they'll shake them and they just stress out the fish because the fish hide most of the time. And they also need to give them sand to push things around. But as they dig in that sand, yet again, if you don't clean that substrate, they get parasites in their bellies. They get worms, brain worms. Okay, so last, we've got three left. It's actually an extra one too, um, included in there. But hatchet fish, hatchet fish, people keep and they jump out of the tank like like crazy, because uh, nobody puts a lid on the tank. But they will jump. They will. You'll go, hey hatchet, and they'll jump out of the tank. So uh, just get a lid. That's how easy that is. But it's too hard for a lot of people, and they jump out of the tank, and then they get dead. Um, the last two. So we've got, it's actually three. We're gonna put all three together. We'll have a list of 23, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, it's just how it's gonna be today. But we've got Oscars. They look so cute and so beautiful in the tanks there. And uh, yeah, Jerry, you're right. Every time you buy a hatchet fish, they fall apart in quarantine. I think people keep them in different water they think that just because they can have a pH of 7, this happens with a lot of fish that are that list a pH as neutral, is that the importing company will say, oh, 7, cool. And they'll put it in their tap water if that's 7. But sometimes the tap water's been treated or they treat it at an RO remineralization tank in their uh, company or warehouse, and that may remineralize the water there, but that might mean that it has a high TDS and a neutral, um, a neutral pH. Or maybe it has a lot of humic acid, a lot of tannins, and yet because of all the buffering, it still has a neutral pH, but you've got all this other stuff in there. So it's not really, you need to look at all those components, um, GH, KH, uh, acids, tannins, humic acid specifically, and that will kind of give you a full picture of what the fish is doing. But I think they put them in that, and then they're in Florida or Texas where it's a high TDS, and they try to keep the water neutral. And then they get shipped to your local store, and like out here, they go, uh, and they'll say, okay, well, our tap water is neutral. Well, our TDS is 25 to like 30 or 40. So then they go to this nothingness of water, and then they go to your tanks, whichever, whatever they are. Um, and so lots of combinations that can happen and they kind of fall apart. So that's, that's I think, what's happening with hatchet fish. And it's also, I think, a factor of what happens with other things like pea puffers and the gobies, because gobies like really low TDS. So, um, Kirk, what's up? All right, so Oscars look cool they're mean as hell they're just as mean as uh a piranha they just don't have razor blades for teeth so even though those albino or leucistic or orange and white or orange and black or yellow and black oscars look beautiful don't buy them unless you have a big tank and you can stomach feeding them half your guppies uh aka like just set aside a trio of guppies in a 10 gallon and feed them all their babies and you'll probably be fine. Uh, actually, they need a diverse diet also. Because think about it, apex predators in the wild, they're eating guppies, they're eating quarries, they're eating whatevers. And those whatevers, some of them eat only algae, only spirulina. Some of them only eat uh, other fish too. And so you end up, with a very diverse diet because of the vitamins and tissues that accumulate in the, the systems of that very diet of apex predators, such as Oscars, the other ones, green terrors, Jack Dempsey's, um, red terrors too. I mean, so those are the fish that I say um, die on you a lot, but also people kill a lot. Um, people put them in tanks that are too small, they get stunted, their stomach gets impacted, and then they freaking die. And it's sad. It's a bummer. Uh, I might make a shorter video on it, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit because... I'm leaning over, sorry. Getting some chapstick. Chapstick. What are you holding in your hand? Chapstick. 
All right, guys. Looks like the viewers are tailing off, too. I think someone else's stream has well started. So I want to bid you a farewell. I want to thank you so much again for joining me today. And uh, I wanted to uh, let you know that I've been sticking with the Tuesday or Wednesday. Usually it's Tuesday and Saturday streams for the last, I think, like four weeks. So I'm really trying to stick to the Tuesday and Saturday or Wednesday and Sunday. Like if, if, I, if I get off on the Tuesday, then that's what will be going on. But yeah. Um, yes, I, can, I, I have to say Oscars are very beautiful. They are a cool fish. You can actually train them. I have a video where I, we taught one at a Aquarium Zen when I worked there to jump through hoops, like, and to come and to kiss and to do all sorts of silly stuff. You can do that with goldfish too. Uh, but they are a very personable fish, like a puffer. It's just they, they get fed meat, meat, meat that doesn't have spirulina. It doesn't have grubs. It doesn't have fruit and nuts that get eaten off the the river forest floor and they end up getting say it with me dead so um that's sad just remember that just because a an animal is a a carnivore doesn't mean that they in captivity can eat just blood worms or shrimp or mussels or whatever they need a well-rounded diet if that is what they are used to. Um, thank you for tuning in this evening. Thank you for tuning in always, you guys. I love you guys. I mean that. I'm here for you if you need to talk. I mean that too. And you've got a great community of killer, not killers, like like killer as in nice, kind, sweet, caring people. And uh, here's to the next 14,000. Dr. Pepper, please pay me money. Uh, and uh, stay safe, take care of your fish, take care of the plants, take care of the people around you, and most of all, well, maybe not most of all, but a lot, take care of yourself so that you can do those other things. And if we all do that half the time, I think that we'd get a world that is twice as good. So uh, I will talk to you next time. Uh, feel free to interact on the Facebook and on the... Uh, or as I like to call it, face space. And uh, also feel free to uh, to uh, do what you want any old time. And I'll talk to y'all later. It's a nice day. I'm going to like the uh, three spine uh, sticklebacks are currently spawning still. And they're fun to watch. So I think I might go watch them. Maybe you guys will get to see that later too. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.